So whenever I see teachers do this online, I absolutely cringe. All right, kids, at the top of your paper, you're gonna put three times two. And then what is three times two? You guys should have six. So today I'm gonna to show you how to change up your teaching experience by showing you how to use Nearpod to create really fun and engaging lessons. Hey fun people, welcome back to Everything Aja. If you're new here, hi, my name is Aja. Here on Everything Aja, I help you bring the fun and excitement back into teaching by giving you really fun games, really fun activities, and by giving you a lot of educational tips and tricks to make teaching as fun, simple, and easy as possible. If this sounds like something you're interested in, then go ahead and subscribe down below and also click the bell because it's that bell notification that will announce each and every time I upload a new video. So today we are talking all about Nearpod and creating Nearpod can be really challenging especially if you're trying to create one from scratch and that's why in today's video I'm literally going to walk you through how to start with an already existing Nearpod add activities add quizzes add games to that Nearpod I'm gonna show you how to push that Nearpod out to your students and also how to look at the data that you'll receive from your students taking that Nearpod so let's get started so the first thing we're going to do is actually go to nearpod.com when you're here if you already have a microsoft 365 account or if you have a google account you can automatically log in for students they will come in and they will enter a code we will talk about that a little later but i just wanted you to know kind of what the home screen looks like um, for us, we're just going to sign up. So the first thing Nearpod is going to do is try to find out a little bit about you. So now what it's going to do is go ahead and generate a bank of lessons that you can actually use. This is your like your home screen when you log in. You'll have all your lessons down here. As you see, we just started, so there's no lesson right here. Now remember I said we can make lessons two types of ways. You can start from scratch by simply clicking this plus sign right here, or you could already use a pre-existing Nearpod lesson and just make it your own. So we are gonna do choice number two. You can enter the Nearpod library by clicking right here or over here on the left-hand corner. You see where it says Nearpod library, either one, doesn't matter, go ahead and click it. Once you're in the Nearpod library, you'll have access to all sorts of lessons, all right? So what I would always do is go ahead and filter out what kind of lesson I want from the beginning. I'm gonna move my face. So right here, we're gonna find a first grade lesson and we're going to look for a math lesson. So I would just click first grade math. Now you can pick out the standard. I will say I recommend not having the standards because for some of these lessons, they aren't aligned to the standards and some of them are. So for me, I always find it easier to just kind of use the, the search box and then I can just search adding, for example, and then it'll automatically filter any adding lesson that is perfect for first grade. Click it, it's going to allow me to do a preview. So with this Nearpod lesson, this is one that's actually made from Nearpod itself. So I just go through preview. Okay, at this point, I know that I already want to use this lesson. So we're gonna click add to lessons. All right, so once you add to your lesson, it kind of goes to your lesson bank. So in order to sh bring that up, you're gonna click show in my lesson and it's going to take you to your lesson that you can actually edit. Now, if I wanted to use this lesson the way it is, I don't wanna edit it at all. I will simply stop here and I will do student pace or live participation. We'll get into that a little later. But I do want to kind of tweak it. So I'm going to click edit. When you hit edit there, you can either edit the downloaded version that you just downloaded on your computer, or you can duplicate the lesson so that you can have both the original lesson and the one you're editing. So I'm just going to edit the lesson because I know that if I ever want to go back and download the original one, I'll just go back to the Nearpod library. All right. So once I'm in here, I will see all of 
my slides now i can kind of delete this all right so this it kind of on your first time it's going to kind of walk you through everything so this teacher guide i really don't need the teacher guide so if you want to delete a slide you just simply click it and hit delete a slide they have kids kind of start the lesson off by drawing a picture that shows an addition problem what i want to do is i want to give my kids an actual number sentence and i want them to draw that number sentence using models so i'm actually going to click this and just delete this slide and i'm going to create my own draw it and just kind of flip it up so i'm going to click add content when I do this, there's all different types of slides that I could add. We can do the Time to Climb, which is a quiz embedded game within Nearpod. You can have open-ended questions where students have to actually type in their answers. You can do matching pairs. The really cool thing about the matching pairs is that there's already some matching pair games already embedded within Nearpod. So if you wanna add matching pairs, and you come over here and we're doing adding, You'll just type in adding, and then you can filter it for your grade, math, perfect, and apply that filter, and it'll automatically filter it. So then perfect, it already has an adding one to 10, so let's just say we want that game. I can click it, and then, y'all, it automatically imports the two cards for the game. There you go. You could add your own if you if you still want more. Equals seven. So this is how you would add your own pair. Um, you just click done, and there is your pair that is automatically added into the game. You click save. Now you have an entire game of matching already in your Nearpod. You can have a quiz to see how much kids have actually learned throughout the lesson. You can do a flip grid, which is an entire separate internet tool, but you can automatically be embedded within Nearpod. You can do draw it where kids actually have to draw out their answer. The collaborate board where kids can all respond to one question and they're able to look at what their peers have actually wrote. You can do a poll with your students. You can also do fill in the blank, which are perfect for like vocabulary. So you simply go in here, choose a little color, and then you can type. You can then choose the word that you want to go into the bank. So let's say dog and stairs were your two vocabulary words. So you click done, and then kids have to figure out the blank went up the blank. So then they just kind of drag which one was dog and which one was stairs. Another cool activity, you can do a memory test, which is just like the game memory where you have an image and the actual word that relates to that image. You can also use it as text. So you can also do the definition um, and vocabulary word with this. Or you could do like a blank slide. If you wanted to, to add some notes for the kids, you can easily go in here, add some notes. Um, maybe you want to add a little gif. Excited? Oh, I'm so excited to add. Are you guys not excited? You can add that. <laughs> you a PDF. Um, you can automatically put in the PDF for them to read. Like if you had a passage you wanted kids to read, just put that passage in here. If you wanted kids to go to a different website, you'll just go to web content and you can paste in the URL and it'll send all the kids directly to that URL, which is really, really, really helpful. Where it says video, this is where you will go to like YouTube. And um, so there's YouTube right there. It also does the Nearpod library that they already have videos in here. So we're going to do a draw it. And once we're in here, it already has pre-made draw it for you that you could just kind of pick. But we're gonna keep it simple. So with the draw it, I can add a timer. I can always add an image. If I wanted to do this as a center and kids are doing this on their own, I could just record myself. Draw a model of the following number sentence, three plus two. So when you add a slide, it actually goes all the way to the bottom here. So you just, in order to move it, you just simply click it and you can just kind of move it like a block. So I just want to see if there's a better video. So I'm going to go to video. So these are videos that already have interacting questions and stuff in the middle. Go to adding. 
and let me click my first grade. Oh, perfect. They already have a video of adding numbers one through 10. However, remember, we're doing adding with models. Once you've come in here, if they don't have an already existing video that really fits the objective that you're doing in the video library, you can simply just go up here to YouTube and then search directly into YouTube. Okay, so once I'm in YouTube, I'm gonna be as specific as I possibly can to really find a video that has what I need. So I'm gonna look up adding ones with models first grade. When I do this, it's gonna search YouTube. So this actually is exactly what I need. I can preview it directly from here. And I know that this is exactly what I'm wanting. So once I have the video, I'm just gonna click save and it's automatically gonna embed that video into my Nearpod. Now here is the best part of this yet. You can add questions and activities directly into the video. I can watch the video and when I get to like right here, all right, I can put add activity, I can do an open-ended question, save. So now when kids reach this part of the video, they have to answer my question. And then I could put a multiple choice. Now you have to tell the computer which one is the right answer. So right over here on the left, you'll see different checks. So right here, I'm gonna actually click the check so that they know that five plus six was the correct answer that I'm looking for kids to actually click. So then I will save that and kids will automatically get this question when they reach this part of the video. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna hit save. So I'm gonna put that video, like I said, you just kinda have to click and drag right here where that other video was, okay? All right, this is already a really developed Nearpod. You have a few different drawlets where they're able to make models to find the sum. You have the part where I can teach, they do open-ended question. We do some hands-on activities, face-to-face. -face. They come right here, they draw it on the computer three times by themselves. So as all great lessons have, there has to be some sort of assessment. So. Most of the Nearpods that are already in the library already have some sort of quiz. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna actually develop the quiz to match my needs. So it says how many tiles are there total. I really want them to use the vocabulary song. So I can add a question right here and I can just add on to the assessment that they already have. If I have a picture of a new number sentence, there you go. I can make bullet points. I can pretty much make this question whatever I want to. Don't forget when you add your answer, you always click the check right here to the left so that Nearpod knows the correct answer. And right now, I'm not gonna use this question, so I'm just gonna go right here to the upper right-hand corner and click delete. All right, so as you see, because I just did a quiz, it's automatically gonna tell me to convert my quiz to a time to climb. Now, when it comes to the time to climb Nearpod video, I'm not gonna show you exactly how to make your own game. So I'm gonna link that video right up here and also down below in the comments if you want to create your own time to climb game within the Nearpod platform. Now that we're done with the Nearpod lesson and I feel like it is a perfect fit for my students, I am ready to see what this looks like. So in the bottom, you will see preview. And when you go to preview, it's gonna give you the student version of what this looks like. So I'm just gonna click the arrows and these arrows is kind of how you go from left to right. All right, so here's my beginning and I'm just now just gonna preview it Okay, perfect, the kids get started, they use their models, they draw a model using their number sentence. When they draw, they use these um, drawing tools down here, they can choose colors, so maybe they do. All right, so now I know that it's going to be highly functioning for what I need my kids to do. So when I'm ready to give to the quiz, I'm gonna quickly hit save and exit. Yay! <laughs> it's really important to know there's two ways of actually giving kids your Nearpod. So the first way is to do a Nearpod live. That means I am in front of the kids and their computer screen flips 
when my computer screen flips. So they can't go ahead of me. We're doing it together as a class. I'm walking them through it. We're doing every slide at the same time. The second way kids can do a Nearpod is they can actually do it on their own. So this is perfect for homework or centers, and they can kind of work at their own pace. Once you know exactly how you want kids to do, go right here and you're gonna go to live participation, means that you're doing it live with them or self-paced. Now, Nearpod is integrated with Zoom. So if you're a school that uses Zoom, you can just directly um, click live participation with Zoom and it'll give you a link to give to your kids. Or you could just hit live participation. Either way, it's gonna give you a link. So let's say I'm doing live participation. I click it and there's my code. So I'm going to either post this code in Teams, Google Class, email, link. I always love to copy it and then drop it in the chat box so that kids automatically just have the link right there. Um, if you're doing the student paste, you can put it into your homework. They just have a link and they are ready to go. So that's pretty much how you create an already existing Nearpod, tweak it and add it as your own. Now, I wanna show you what it looks like once kids have gone through the Nearpod so that you know their data. Now, the really cool thing is if you are doing a quiz live and you're doing live participation, on your screen, you'll see all your students and you can automatically see which questions they're getting right, which questions they're getting wrong. So this allows you to give instant feedback, like from the screen, just give feedback instantly. All right, so let's say you gave your Nearpod and you did it either live or student pace and you're ready to look at the data. You're going to go to your homepage and the upper right hand corner are three little dots. You're gonna click those dots and then look at your reports. So in your reports, it's gonna show every session. So a session is like one class setting. When I co-taught fifth grade, I actually had two sets of kids. So I could create two different sessions of the Nearpod and then restart the Nearpod. That's all it means is when you go back and restart it, it's gonna give, give you a different code. For every code you populate off of one Nearpod is a different session. So right now we've only done one session. So I just come here and I had only one student take this Nearpod. So when I come in here, I'm gonna look at all of my kids' data. So I'm gonna go to that quiz because the quiz was the main thing that I was looking at. And I'm going to see that for that first question, all the kids got it right, perfect. But that second question, they bombed. So I'm gonna take these kids and I'm gonna pull them into a small group. The interactive video was another thing you can use, but for me, I feel like the formative assessment at the end of the Nearpod is your biggest takeaway. And that is what you want to look at. And that's the data that you wanna pull. So that's the data that I would come down here. Now, if you're like, oh, I just want this printed out, perfect. You can actually download it right here and it's gonna to download to your computer. You can download it in um, CV, I'm sorry, CSV, which would automatically populate in Excel, or you can do a PDF version. You can actually pull the student version if you wanted to give it to a parent, then you wanted to say, this is what they did on the Nearpod, here you go. You can also share this data and email it to either yourself or a parent or your co-teacher. Now you have everything you need to start with an already existing Nearpod and really make it your own. Let me know down below in the comments, what is your experience using the Nearpod platform? I've been using Nearpod for about eight years. I love Nearpod and I've actually seen how they've developed and grown over the years and I absolutely love it. Remember, if you wanna see all about Entire playlist.